Okay. So I'm now going to show you a couple more tricks in SAM that may help you to process data. Um, in the past, uh, I've seen that uh, couple, sometimes this module doesn't work very well in all computers, and I still haven't found what the cause is or when it works and when it's not, when it doesn't. But I hope it works in your computer. Uh, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? So here I'm starting from scratch. There's no variable, nothing. No data. I can go to data, data handling, GIS grids. You better w just watch that than taking notes. It's all written in the tutorial with much more detail and time than I have. Okay? So create a GIS grid. Here's the world. Let's create a, a grid for Africa. For what? <laughs> for Uganda. For Uganda? No, let's do for Africa. You are, we're not the only one here. Otherwise, it's going to be Mexico. <laughs> so, uh, you can just set up what's the extent of the grid you need. Uh, like here, around Africa. I could go uh, do this in more detail, but that should be enough for the moment. Then you create a grid. And here it is. That's your grid. Okay. Uh, and now we want to remove cells that are falling in the Atlantic, falling in the ocean. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You can click calculate. It's going to take a couple seconds, hopefully. There it is. Now we can just delete these cells. And now you have a grid. Okay? Then you can save that grid and it's going to create a shape file. And with that shape file, uh, I'm not going to do this for this particular shape file because that will take uh, uh, some time. But with that particular shape file, you could come back and do data, data handling, GIS grids. And then you can get species occurrence from shapefile. So you can download uh, shapefiles of species distribution and create maps of richness or turnover or anything you want with that particular shapefiles of species distribution on top of this grid. Okay? The, the tutorial explains it very, in a very detailed way. So you don't need to worry if you're not following right now. Just go back to the tutorial and follow the, the, first, two par the first two chapters. What is the unique of the grid cells? I'm sorry? What is the unique of the grid cells? The, the size of the grid cells? The unit. The unit. Yeah, because you, you just put one. So. Yeah, it's degree. It's degree. It, the unit is degree. Uh, here I'm, I'm building a grid that is one by one degree. If I change here for 0 0.5, there will be zero by half by half degree. Uh, I can also uh, delete additional cells here so that it looks prettier. Uh, but in any way, in the end, what this will generate for you is latitude and longitude of each cell. That's all we need here for analysis. We do not need shape files. We do not need more information than fits in a spreadsheet. So it's pretty simple information we need. Okay? Um, okay, so suppose you do that. I'm not going to do that because it, it takes more time. Uh, and let me check here. 
This is the Madagascar data set. Um, here's the Madagascar data set that uh, Town has prepared. So now we want to, for example, to uh, see how related bird richness is to some measures of environmental variable. So some, some environmental variables. For example, temperature or for example, altitude uh, across Madagascar. How can we process that data set or, or, or this grid in SAM? Well, first, to make things look prettier, I'm gonna decrease, I'm gonna map symbol square. Okay, that's the grid. And now what I'm gonna do is to get environmental data into my grid. Uh, I hope you all have heard of world clean. It's not the best. It's not even good, but it's <laughs> pretty handy. <laughs> uh, world clean is a couple clicks away. Worldclean.org. World clean.org see here it is you can go here come here download a couple uh, uh, environmental layers <laughs> well I'm just I'm just showing the world claim because it's uh, handy data doesn't mean it's good uh, you could do that to any data set you want as long as it's in this format generic grid it could be any environmental data you want but in any way suppose you went there and you got the data uh, for example here it is altitude maybe the altitude they can no <laughs> Uh, okay, here it is. Oh, by the way, uh, these files were in the server. Maybe you have downloaded it. Uh, now I want to get what is the altitude within the cell. Sure, you could use ArcGIS, QGIS, R, any program you want. Hopefully, same will be faster and easier. Uh, GIS grid, race scale raster grid. Here it is. That's the size of the cells. At least, uh, what what was their size of the, of the cells? Point three 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 three. Is here the size of the cells? And now I'm gonna tell what is the variable that I'm trying to uh, study. It's altitude. I hope there's sufficient uh, resolution. And now, what do I want? Do I want the average altitude within its cell? Do I want the maximum altitude within its cell? The minimum? Or maybe the variation, the range? Something like that. Then I click compute. Here it is. Altitude per cell. Now, this is the number of pixels in the original raster file uh, within its cell. Uh, most of them had four pixels in the original grid. Some of them had three. Some of them had zero. So we don't have information for this particular uh, cell. Um, and here is average altitude within its cell. Seems that there is a mountain within Madagascar. Madagascar. Uh, sorry, I don't know much about the geography of Madagascar. <laughs> uh, so here it is, altitude uh, for Madagascar. And now, just as an example, I can now contrast bird richness bird richness with average altitude in the island. 
I don't see any strong relationship, but that's how it works. You, you get your environmental variable, and here is a species richness of whatever group you, you, you want to study. Right? Okay? Here's another trick. Uh, suppose I want you to know what point is this one? Where is the cell located? And here is my map of species richness. If I hold Alt and drag over here, it's going to highlight what cells are these two. In particular, it's this one and this one. And I could do that for any cell I want. What are these two? There's one here in yellow, another one is here. Oh, if I do black and white map, maybe it's easier. Ah. There they are. All right. Well, there are a bunch of additional tricks and uh, possibilities in SAM. Uh, as you may have seen, there are lots more, uh, there are lots of, uh, the menu is here pretty big, uh, both for modeling, for statistical models, and describing spatial structure. So there are a bunch of options here that we cannot cover in a single day, but they are all explained in the tutorial. So what I hope I have done uh, today is to convince you that uh, it's worth looking at maps. That's the main message. Uh, maps can guide you to what are the causes of biodiversity. And when you look at maps, you can also ask, uh, how is this map structured? How, how, is, how strong is the pattern in this map? Then we can use several statistics to describe that map in several different possible ways. Uh, describe them analytically, like Morenzi, or describe them using pretty maps. Uh, I also have, uh, I hope I have convinced you uh, that studying ecological patterns, uh, the, or studying the causes of uh, biodiverse patterns, it's very interesting. Uh, sure, we need applied uh, studies, or we need uh, to find ways to uh, preserve or conserve biodiversity. Uh, but I'm, I'm among those that think that you can only preserve or you can only make good decisions about preservation of biodiversity if you understand what it is and what causes it. So it's investigating the causes are real, is really important to uh, guide conservation and decision on how to, cons uh, to preserve biodiversity. Um, I also hope you have uh, enjoyed playing a little bit with Sam and I hope you're gonna find time within the next days to explore uh, more of the software. I'll be always one email away uh, if you have suggestions, problems, questions. Uh, usually, usually uh, Emails from uh, African countries get top priority in answers. <laughs> uh, really? That's really true. Africa, South America, and Asia get top priority. Because, you know, these guys in the US and Europe, they, they always have some resource around. Why should I answer them? 
and that's that's really my my policy uh, for for helping user same users. Um, yeah, so I really hope you have enjoyed the day. I think that's all I had for you. Thank you.